Piracy on the one hand and explosive growth on the other have turned the video world into a jungle, from which Luke Casey now reports. Video, the word and its images, have hit the high streets faster than laundrettes and space invaders put together. In less than a year, video has become the fastest growing industry in Britain. Thousands of films on millions of cassettes are being offered to a seemingly insatiable public. And the investors and entrepreneurs trying to cash in make unlikely bedfellows. Everybody from the National Coal Board Pension Fund to paid off redundant steel workers to downright crooks are chasing a share of the action. The excitement about the market in the last couple of years is that in a depressed Britain it has been one of the few markets growing really rapidly. If you look at the placements of the machines it's been roughly doubling in recent years. To find a market like that is exciting and so that's why attention has tended to concentrate on it. We in Britain have become the most avid video watchers in the world. We have more video recorders per head of population than any other country. From half a million recorders a year ago, we're now pushing two million and rising fast. The Royal Wedding and the World Cup started a hiring boom which hasn't stopped. Initially, people used these new machines for time shifting, recording television programs to watch later. But in the past year, they've been turning increasingly to what the industry calls pre-recorded software. In other words, cassettes of feature films which they buy are more often higher cheaply. But suddenly, the bandwagon is beginning to creak under the weight of cassettes being produced and the would-be entrepreneurs still climbing aboard to produce and market even more. Cutthroat competition in the high street is compounding the chaos. The trade says there are 25,000 video shops. That's a hundred for every one branch of Marks and Spencer's. And although they have 3,000 video titles to choose from at any one time, there are only about 100 top sellers. Shops go bust every day. In one area of North London, more than 30 shops closed in the space of a month. But it hasn't deterred new triers. Even petrol stations, Chinese takeaways and tobacconists are getting in on the act. Simple arithmetic shows that in a total market worth about £200 million, there simply isn't enough money to go round. Even multiples like W.H. Smith's have pulled out of rental. Boots have cut back their involvement. And Woolworths, who had embraced video as if it were a crock of gold, are now treating it like a hot potato. They've closed down their 10,000 member video club and cleared the shelves to make way for more stable lines. Such drastic action suggests that the video boom was no more than a fool's gold rush and it has shocked the big suppliers into greater efforts to regulate the business. It would be a catastrophe for the video, the, this embryonic video market if such people were to pass us by. Um, we intend to try and lead people such as Smiths, such as Boots and so on, back into the marketplace with a more carefully controlled um, a look at that marketplace. Does that mean you refuse to supply the Chinese takeaways and the tobacconists and filling stations then with videos? Yes, I think effectively, through controlling the final distribution, it allows for a strengthening of those people that are going to be serious within the marketplace, with all due respect to the uh, Chinese takeaway petrol station and so on. So, the legitimate industry is in chaos. But there's another illegitimate side to it, which is booming, bandit-ridden, and for the time being, at any rate, apparently beyond control. That's video piracy. This black market, which is believed to be raking off over a hundred million pounds a year, and to account for over half this country's entire video trade, has led to Britain being dubbed the pirate video capital of the world. The pirates normally operate from hastily set up backstreet factories, using dozens of video cassette recorders linked together, they can churn out thousands of illegal copies of any video film from one master tape. And it's all done on the cheap because they're flouting the copyright laws. Not only that, but the pirates are also managing to get hold of illegal copies of feature films, 
even before they appear in the cinemas. With such fierce competition among the shops, it's easy to see why there's a ready market for the cheap pirated tapes. We've got the price of tapes going up, we've got pirate films coming in, pirate films can be bought as little as £13. The same films that I can buy or even can't buy around about £40. Now, how great a temptation is it for a, a genuine retailer like yourself to start dealing in pirated goods? Well, it's, it's very tempting. This is the old crux of the matter. It's so tempting that if a man is buying his tapes and taking his money and then all of a sudden there's no money left, he's only one way to turn. The temptation proved too great for the manager of this newsagent shop and video club in Leeds. He's Rod Crooks, a self-confessed video pirate who's had civil action taken against him. Uh, the attraction was mostly the latest releases and uh, if you can get the latest releases you've done a good thing, obvious, uh, because people come to you and if you don't get them then they will go somewhere else. Again. Mr. Crooks has been ordered by the court to surrender any pirated copies still in his possession. During the interview, he handed over what he said were the last of them to us. You know, I said, well, there's two films, you know, already out, you know, but I'm going to hand them back now. You know, in fact, I'll hand them back to you. you what know, what and, have you got? Uh, and I think, well, you know, this is, um, that's one of them. This is... Yeah, well, this is the new one that... Uh, oh, this not... is this is the film E.T.? That's right, yeah. Extraterrestrial. Yeah, that's right. You're not supposed to have uh, uh, this... them like, and it's not no, this, supposed this to be... Is, this is one that's broken all box office records in, in America. America. Yeah, that's and right. it's not it's... even released in this country. Oh, yet. no, no, no. I mean, there's thousands of them. With uh, the pirated product earning perhaps £100 million pounds, uh, in consumer expenditure this year, and with the vast number of outlets handling pirated products and the very considerable number of people doing the actual pirating, the illegal copying on a, on a large scale, it is quite impossible, given the money and the manpower available to them, that the copyright owners, which means the film companies, uh, can track down and bring to justice uh, more than a small proportion of the people who are engaged in this trade. The only people who can do it are the police. And they, with a few notable exceptions, are not willing at this point in time to concern themselves with the problem.